there is the potential for a mass exodus to come. We talked about on yesterday's show, Elias Lindholm, Michael Backlund, as well as Noah Hannafin, all leaning at this moment in time, we're told, toward not re-signing with the Flames. And then to add another log onto the pile yesterday, that would be Tyler Toffoli adding his name into the mix. Toffoli, sources say, has asked the Flames for a trade. Has it been quite as specific a request from the other three guys that are on the list, Mike? But when you look at this situation, what should Craig Conroy do next? Well, I don't think he has much of a choice. If these players want to go, recoup the most assets you possibly can. But the hard part, Frank, is that you still have Jonathan Huberto and Nazem Kadri tied up for a long time that are going to be your you know, top-line players. How does Conroy backfill the center ice position? If Lindholm and Backlund both take off, the center market as UFA is very thin. The trade market, I mean, like Pierre-Luc Dubois, Shifley, these guys aren't coming to Calgary. I'm not sure how Conroy is going to be able to have a working lineup if he has to move these players. So if that's the case, do you just tear it down? And then you got the three-headed goalie monster. You got Jacob Markstrom. They'd probably like to move him, but hey, he's got a new movement clause. He wants to stay. Dustin Wolf should be in the NHL. Dan Vladar is getting all kinds of interest around the league at a team-friendly $2.2 million. I think all signs lead to burn it down. Get it going the other way. Even with Kadri and Guberdeau, how do you get around this, Frank? How would you be able to construct a team that could possibly contend for a Stanley Cup playoff spot? I want to remind everyone that it is still possible that one of these guys changes their mind. And a Lindholm, for instance, they offer the absolute bag to, which I believe they did roll out the red carpet for him yeah, earlier he's this the week key. in an effort to convince him. It, it is possible, just so everyone knows, within the realm of possibility that he does stay. I, I still think it's unlikely, but the chance of that still exists. Here's what I would do. This is kind of goes against what Craig Conroy was saying in his introductory press conference, the idea of asset management. I would turn the tables on these guys, all of whom have a year left on their deals, and say, I might move one of you if I can find the right value this summer. And if not, everyone's coming back. And we are going to try and make the playoffs next year. And if not, I'm going to be moving guys as the season moves along. But basically put the pressure on these players to say, yeah, you're going to be a free agent one year from now. And yeah, the cap's going up. But if you don't have a great contract year, that's on you. That's not on me. And so... Let's not forget that they are under contract for one more season, as unpopular as a choice that it may be, the ability here to go in another direction still exists. And maybe you don't trade all of them because I think it's hard to trade all of them in one shot. Maybe you find the best value that you can for Noah Hannafin, for instance. And then there's also still like a trickle down effect question that needs to be asked of some guys that we haven't heard from yet. What about Chris Tanev? What about Nikita Zadorov? These are a couple other players still in prime positions to also be free agents one year from now that Calgary has to sift through. So real quick to wrap on this, do you think there'd be any other any pressure from other GMs for Conroy to put that foot in the in the ground here and try to tell the players, hey, pound sand for a little bit here, you guys don't have the power? As much as some would like to see it, they're way more interested in their own situation and trying to pry some of those players out of there so typically mm. i would say from a league-wide standpoint i'm sure someone's rooting for that but i'd say more are rooting for those guys to you know for absolute chaos so that they can try and maximize the value that they get in bringing those players in you know as always someone wants to throw you a lifeline that's really just disguised as an anchor <laughs>